Hey everybody, Troy Miller here from Collier Television. I'm here with Dan Summers, our Director of Bureau of Emergency Services. Dan, it's June. That means the start of hurricane season. Now, it's been a while since we've had an impact, so we got to remind people more than ever to get ready because complacency usually sets in about now. It really does. And, and again, we want to stress there are things and tools out there that you need to take a look at again. Go to our websites. Go to FEMA.gov. Go to Ready.gov. Review that Family Hurricane Action Plan. Look at that checklist. Look at those things you need to do around the house. Be thinking about your evacuation plan, where you're going to go, how much time does it take you to get to that location. And remember, communications is key. Listen to what we're putting out on radio and television and social media. So take it seriously. Build that family action plan. Review it because when the hurricane watch comes, all of a sudden time becomes your enemy. And you, there are things that you're going to want to do that you should have done right now uh, to prepare. And so we want to encourage you Dust that plan off, have that family discussion, review communications, get those important papers, make a plan. You know, Dan, you've said the word plan several times, and that's really what it's all about, folks. You're not going to have the time once a watch or a warning is bearing down on you. You want to replenish your hurricane supply kit. We've got list, as Dan said, ready.gov, FEMA.gov, call your EM.org. You can get a full list of what should be in that list. But think things like water and food supplies and medicines for you and your family for 72 hours. And that's one of the keys, Dan. We always talk a lot about that 72 hours. Why is that? Well, we know that it takes three or four days to get essential services restored or identified. So when we say the first 72 is up to you, we want you to be totally self-sufficient for those 72 hours. Know what you can do to get by with without electricity. Have you got the bottled water? Do you have the medicines? Do you have things to charge your cell phones and alternate means of communication? So 72, totally independent, totally self-sufficient is a really good way to plan. After that, we'll be working to get services going. It may take more than 72 hours, but 72 hours of total self-sufficiency without those normal conveniences around the home that's what you need to plan for. We talk a lot about being prepared in advance and preparing your home. And people think of the obvious things like shutters and things like that. Well, now's the time to think about any upgrades you might have done since last hurricane season to your home to prepare it for hurricane season. Because, Dan, there can be some insurance savings if you do some major improvements to your home. Well, that's right. You know, you always want to check that insurance policy very carefully. Maybe you are eligible for a wind discount related to your roof. Uh, maybe you have added shutters this year but did not report that. Maybe a security or alarm system that may, you may also give you some insurance credit. Um, pay attention as well to your flood insurance. That is so key. Everybody thinks a hurricane, and, and that is the wind component, but if we get storm surge and you get flood, that national flood insurance policy is your primary lifeline for restoration. We talk about big things around your house, hurricane shutters and so forth, but there are little things you can do like preparing your landscaping, remembering to bring in lawn furniture. We need to remind folks little things like that can become serious projectiles in a hurricane and cause not only damage to your home, but your neighbors. Well, they really can. You know, think about something small that's getting hit by an 80 or 100 mile an hour wind. It becomes a, a, a projectile. Is it going to damage the pool cage? Uh, is it going to hit a window? Is it going to break a sliding glass door? Any of, any of those things that potentially breaks the envelope of your structure is what really causes the damage. Now, Dan, as we said, we don't do evacuations lightly. We take them very seriously when we're going to call for an evacuation. And we want people to have that evacuation plan ready. We do have some extra facilities or extra programs, I should say, here in Collier County, especially for special needs people and for people with pets. Just real quickly, if you're a special needs person in the county and you've not pre-registered for a hurricane assistance, what do we need to do? Just call here? Go to our website. Go to callyourem.org. Look at our special registration. We have to do part of that by paper. There's a form that you can print off and mail that to us and work with our special needs registry staff so that we're able to sort of help you and guide you a little bit with um, what resources may be available. Everything is certainly limited. We have to look after those most frail elderly or electrically dependent or have transportation limitations, we want to do our best with all of our community partners to take care of those individuals. So, but we, we're not going to be able to help you if we don't know. So you got to, you got to share some information with us and that's done uh, primarily by paper right now, but go to our website and check that out. Our shelter resources certainly are out there, but 
we kind of put it this way, um, they're the lifeboat, not the love boat. So the very essential services are there, and we're really there to provide you some refuge. Yeah, we really do encourage people, if you have family in the area that you can go to or another option besides a shelter, that's always going to be good, not only for you, but it helps us serve more people who might not have an alternative other than a shelter. Dan, let's talk about evacuation and reentry after the storm. We always encourage people to take the proper, proper documents with them as far as insurance, medicine, those kind of things. But it's important to take some things with you that are going to get you back into the county if you've evacuated. What do we need if we're coming back in? What, what we really need for you to have, if you come up to a traffic control point, say we've got an area that's severely damaged and working with our law enforcement partners, maybe they need to make sure that only residents return. First of all, listen and don't return too early. Make sure that we're ready for you. Uh, we're doing some safety assessments in the community before we start letting people in. But bring several forms of identification. Make sure that maybe your driver's license is tied to the property that you are living or staying at if possible. If not, a copy of the utility bill with your name, with the address that you're going to. It could be a water, sewer, cable bill gas bill, any of those type of things that can give us to give our law enforcement two reasonable forms of information or identification that ties you to the property that you're going to. Folks, hurricane season goes now from June all the way through the end of November, and we need to be prepared. We're here with Dan Summers, our Director of Bureau of Emergency Services. We've talked about the importance of planning. We've talked about the importance of listening for information once we're in a watch or a warning. Hey, you can visit us on Facebook. You've got callyourgov.net. You've got callyourem.org. There's ready.gov. There's plenty of assets out there for you. Take advantage of them now. Dan, what last words do you want to say to the people of Collier County here that kind of edge them on, urge them on, let's get ready this year and let's be ready for hurricane season? Well, you know, one of the things that struck me this year was um, the National Hurricane Center saying maybe a 30% chance of a busier season or a 20% chance of a less than busy season. Well, t guess what? Let's just make it 100% prepared and let's use that number and let's move forward throughout the season so that we can protect lives. Uh, protect property and put Collier County back in the pre-disaster condition as quickly as we can and we'll enjoy our regular way of life here. Stay with us here on Collier Television. Follow us on Facebook. Visit us at Collier.dev. We'll keep you ready for hurricane season. Dan, thanks so much. Thank you, you all stay safe.